you, dear viewer, can code in just about any language. You can code Python scripts, you can code Java classes, and you can code in COBOL, Assembler, RPG. The only assistance you need comes from generative AI. This prompt here will work in just about any large language model. Generative AI is assisting software developers of all levels of experience to write code. The user enters a text prompt describing what the code should do, and Generative AI creates the corresponding code like this. And we can go much further than these examples. In addition to creating new applications, Generative AI can help modernize legacy code or translate code from one programming language to another. So, so let's explore how this works, how this is different to low and no code, and define the two broad categories of generative AI code generation. Okay, so generative AI for coding is possible because of advancements in NLP, that's natural language processing, deep learning algorithms, and our good friends, large language models, or L. LLMs. Now, these LLMs are trained on a vast data set of existing source code. Now, the more diverse the source code, the better. The, the training code generally comes from publicly available code, such as those produced by open source projects, although we can also fine tune LLMs with proprietary code that we feed into the model. Now, here's how this works. Programmers enter text prompts into the LLM. And this describes what they want the code to do. So uh, sort this row of data or create a submit button, stuff like that. And then how they want the generative AI system to actually process that. Now that could be in the form of a number of different things. So it could be in the form of code snippets, or it could be all the way through to full functions of actual code. And this can really streamline the coding process by handling repetitive tasks that a human programmer is more than happy to offload. Looking at you, error reporting to log files. Now, generative AI can also translate code from one language to another, something that's particularly useful in modernization projects, such as updating legacy applications by transforming COBOL to Java. It can also serve as a very efficient method of testing, and it's a great way to perform debugging. Now, this works best as an assistant rather than a complete replacement for human programmers. Even as code produced by the generative AI and the LLM technologies becomes more accurate, it can still contain flaws and it should be reviewed, edited, and refined by actual real-life people. So we can think of generative AI as enabling developers to generate code faster, reducing the work of manually writing lines of code, and freeing developers to focus on higher value work. Now, I want to pause a moment to compare all of this to something called low and no code solutions and to see what the similarities and differences are. Now, this is another way to generate code quickly. Low and no code tools, they're built on a series of templates that provide input into this, and they also use a series of libraries of components. Now, people without coding skills can use a visual interface to do things like drag and drop components to create applications quickly. The code that this creates is hidden in the background. You don't see it. Now, generative AI for code, on the other hand, doesn't use templates, doesn't use libraries of components. The software is reading the developer's plain language prompts and suggests code snippets from scratch that will produce the desired results. So while low-code and no-code tools generally target non-developers and business users, both pro-developers and other users can use AI code generation software. All right, so let's finally put generative AI code into two categories. I think we can think of this in, in two different ways. 
And the first way I would consider is general purpose. So we're talking here about general purpose generative AI applications, and that encompasses stuff like ChatGPT and Google Bard. And depending on their training data set, most of these LLMs can perform some level of coding based on text prompts. But these are freestanding tools rather than integrated plugins that work directly in the developer's own environment. That is the second category. So we can think of the second category really as being code generation tools. These are tools dedicated specifically to creating code rather than these general purpose ones which address a much broader area. So for example, we can think of GitHub Copilot. That's a pre-trained AI model and code completion tool that writes code in many languages, including JavaScript, Go, Perl, Ruby, Swift, the, the list goes on. It, it uses machine learning to suggest code based on context, can analyze code for vulnerabilities, and is available for, as an extension for various IDEs, including Visual Studio Code. And there's also IBM Watson X Code Assistant that helps developers write code using AI-generated recommendations. It provides pre-trained, curated models based on specific programming languages. Ultimately, generative AI for code is a valuable tool in code creation, in code translation, testing, and debugging. And best of all, it's opening up who can contribute to the software development process. If you have any questions, please drop us a line below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.